This is everything we ate in the Philippines week 1. In a previous video, I asked if you could keep up with my family when it came to eating. But let me tell you, I never felt pangs of hunger on this trip, ever. It was a lot, so buckle up. When we landed, it was pretty late, so Doug and I just ate at the restaurant in the hotel. Not the best way to start this video, but the food was just meh. It was either bland or the veggies were undercooked, but hey, it was still food and nourished us from our travels. Shout out to that banana though, it was delicious. We woke up pretty early this day, so Doug, me, my sister, and her fiance hit the gym for a bit to prep for the day. My parents told us that we were going to a buffet, so we kept that in mind while having our Filipino breakfast. Then we had a quick coffee break before we headed over to Spiral Buffet. This buffet was huge and served foods from around the world. This was the one with the cheese room and the three chocolate fountains. Okay, so you know that when you go to a buffet, it's kind of expected that you eat a little more than usual? Well, we drove over to visit our family friends right after. You guys, they knew we came from a buffet and they had another mini feast waiting for us. We said we wouldn't eat much of it, but it was too good. For day two, my family and I stayed at Casa San Pablo, which is a bed and breakfast. Doug and I had a little fruit snack before partaking in the B&B's super tasty Filipino breakfast. It was the kind of food I'd eat in my childhood. Marinated meats and fried fish with rice. Then we headed to a plantation and attraction called Villa Escudero. Here we experienced Filipino heritage through a few activities and a cultural show. A buffet lunch is included in the tour and you can choose to eat it right next to a waterfall. But you gotta take your shoes off and your legs are submerged in water. Doug and I already did this years ago so this time we just opted for their dining room experience. And my brothers followed. You get the same type of food at either one anyway, which are traditional Filipino dishes. And we got a bonus kitty that wouldn't stop begging us for our food. By the way, most of these spots are covered in my shorter videos. If you want more details on the food, check those out. So yeah, my family went paddling and then we headed off to dinner. We ate at King Sisig, which we kept seeing at the mall. It wasn't like the best Sisig we've had, but it hit the spot enough. Sadly, the noodles were undercooked. As we headed out the mall, we saw a spot that sold puto bombom, which is a fermented black sticky rice dessert. This is typically served only during the holidays, so we were lucky to get our hands on some. And I don't care how full I was, I had to eat this. It was my first time having it, and my dad told me that it's probably also the best one he's had. It was chewy, tangy, and sweet. This one was memorable. So the bed and breakfast we were staying at. We ate our first meal there, but we met the owners right when we were going to leave. So guess what? We stayed a few more hours as they showed us the traditional Filipino foods that they were preserving. There was a grilled eggplant dish, some pizzas using Filipino ingredients, and ube jam. This was so fun. I'm glad we ran into them. On our way back to Manila, mom wanted to stop by a place to try their sweetbreads and pastries. We snacked on these in the car until we reached our destination. And then we ate again. More Filipino food from the mall for dinner. I think at this point we were pretty tired of seasick. <laughs> Alright, today's a whole reason why we went to Manila. A debu. But first, breakfast. We found at the hot sal, which is a Filipino soft tofu dessert. It wasn't as good as I remembered it, but it's okay. We'll get legit street food style the hot later. We've only been here for four days and it feels like we've been here for like two weeks. So now we're heading over to the Conrad Hotel. I'm gonna meet my friend Charmaine for the first time in person. Charmaine recommended this spot called Locavore and I was so surprised by how good it was. The food on the menu sounded like the traditional Filipino food that I grew up with, but they're shaking it up. Like a beef soup called bulalo was fused with pho, and they made pho lalo. Or sinigang, which is my favorite Filipino dish, was served on a sizzling dish instead. Hands down, that sinigang was probably my favorite restaurant dish that I had on this trip. But also every dish we had at Locavor was bomb. And aside from the amazing food, I'm grateful to have finally met Charmaine. After we rolled out of there, we passed some time by having some matcha lattes in a nearby shop. 
Then we went to our hotel to try some Japan snacks we got at the airport on the way here. And finally, the Debu. It's a Filipina's grand 18th birthday, and we dressed up for the occasion. These parties are awesome, and really, it's a way for us to also have a mini reunion with the people that we love and haven't seen in a while. This event was the biggest reason why we went to the Philippines. Phew, okay, I said I'd be covering food for a week, and day five is gonna have to wrap this up. It's the day before we leave for Boracay, and honestly, we've had enough food to last us three weeks at this point. I impulsively bought Shake Shake fries, thinking I'd be able to shake them myself. I didn't, but still enjoy that as breakfast and some more taho. Immediately after, we headed out to Aristocrat, which is apparently a restaurant that my dad used to go to a lot when he was a kid. We're having a family reunion with my dad's side of the family. Guess what we're having? Guess! Filipino food! This spot was a little more traditional, and I like the vibe here. Maybe it's because I get to imagine my dad as a kid, with my grandparents and aunts, coming here and enjoying the same type of food we're eating now. And it was good! The fresh lumpia was surprisingly tasty. Okay, I can't believe we did this, but right after, we squeezed in an order for a Tropical Hut. Doug really wanted to try it before we left Manila since my dad wouldn't stop hyping it up. It was worth it. The burgers are delicious. The fries? Mm, not so much. And for our final full meal in Manila, we had food again with more family friends. They took us to Manam, and it's like the Filipino food that I was familiar with and heard of before, but presented in a more artsy way. Also, I wanted to add, I thought Manila had a great variety of different cuisines to offer. We just ended up eating Filipino food over and over again because, well, we missed the Filipino food from here. So yeah, although we had a lot of food, it was worth it. If you got this far, tell me if you think you can keep up eating with my family. And while you're at it, comment the coconut emoji three times. Thanks for eating with us. I'll be back with more eating to do.